So what we have here in sample graphic is a series of circles that we can turn into a face. First thing to do is of course save this as a new file because you need to keep sample graphic original and then just change the date code to whatever day you're doing this and change this to let's call it emoji one. We are going to be trying to uh, get across some sort of emotion with this. So if you already know what you're going to shoot for, you can uh, add that into the name as well. The reason we're doing this is to really get some practice with layers and reuse them. Of course, we won't be needing this layer that has those strokes on it, but this circle right here can become the face. So rename your layers as you go so that you can identify them because when you have a very complex drawing, it can get very, very complicated, especially when you bring it into another program to do any animation. We've got the face here. It's red right now, but if I open my gradient panel, I can simply change that to more or less a standard yellow emoji face. We do want to have that 3D beveled effect. It does not have to stay black, but something darker so we get that beveled look, something that is going to look good for you. I'm just going to stick with one of these grays right here, just so it's a little bit lighter. And go back to my layers. Again, F7 will reveal your layers for you, so that's a great keyboard shortcut to know. I'm going to lock the face because that way if I click on it, I'm moving things around, that one is going to stay in place until I want to move it. Now the green circle is going to become the sclera or the whites of the eye. And I'm predicting a color here for the iris. Let's change it to something original to you. Pick something. And then this is going to be the pupil. So I'm renaming them ahead of time. I can select my pupil. I know that one is not a gradient. It's just going to be a solid black. And this as the sclera, it is the whites of the eyes. If I select it, I can do it that way or click here. And again, going to my gradient panel and change that up real quick to white. That does need to be white. It's going to look very strange otherwise, at least for your first one, so you can get a face that's recognizable. Now I want to select all three of these and shrink it down so I have room for other things on the face. So to do that, there's several ways. I can try shift clicking on each one of them. Sometimes that's really hard to do. So you can shift or control click on these targets right here. But also since the background is already locked, we can just draw a big selection around it and it's all been selected. So I'm going to grab a corner. Of course, you want to hold down shift. And you can hold down Alt as well for good practice. And you know that that's now going to be moved into one of those positions right there. Now this pupil is very large. I can totally see animating a change in size, the scale of it, like it could come down to a focus um, or get really big if you're trying to convey different emotions. I'm just going to leave it more or less normal, just about like that. So now I have pupil, iris, and sclera. Rather than just grouping these together, it is my belief that you should make a new layer for those. In this case, we'll call it the left eye. Let's just agree to abbreviate left and right with the L and the R, and that'll save everybody a lot of typing. And then move these onto that layer. That way they get to keep their name. If you group them, I'll show you what happens. If I select these, right click and make a group, it all moves to one layer, leaving the others empty, and these no longer have a name. So it just loses that. So I recommend moving, whoops, edit, redo. We'll call this left eye, and then move these onto there. So again, I am shift clicking on the last one. It selects everything in between and just moving those to the left eye. One, two, three things. That way, if you decide, you know what, I want to animate that pupil, it's easy to pull it back out onto its own layer. It's also easy to change the scale and size of this outer part of the eye. And we'll do that next and then try and get a second eye on here.